Hi guys, Chef Dave here with New Wave Ovens and Precision Induction Cooktop. Today we're going to do uh, something really nice. I'm going to show you how to fillet a round fish. And then from that fish, we're going to go ahead and make a really nice dish sauteed red snapper with fresh asparagus, capers, and a little wine butter sauce, okay? So what's important to this is teaching you quickly how to fillet your own fish. Um, basically there's two types of fish for the home cook. What we call a round fish, a fish that is well, basically round, with a fillet on each side. There's also flat fish, like fluke or flounder or Dover sole, that has two fillets on the top and two fillets on the bottom. We'll cover that in another video. So today what we have here is a beautiful red snapper, uh, sustainably caught from some good fishermen. I'm gonna just pat it dry a little bit and we're gonna talk about it and see how you guys can figure out how fish is fresh. So, first thing I do when I buy a whole fish, very simple, I look inside the gills. I open up the gills, if you can see inside here, they're bright red, and that's what we want. If they're brown, murky, we don't want those. We want bright red gills. Second thing I do, don't be put off by this, but I look at the fish's eye. The eye should be rounded, it should be bulging out. It shouldn't be sunken. If it's sunken, it means the fish has been out of the water for a while, and it's decaying. Okay, the third thing is very simple, to smell it. Pick the fish up, smell it near the gills, smell it near the belly cavity. It should smell like the ocean, and it does, okay? And fourth little test for the fish is the skin. The skin should not be slimy. Okay, the skin should have a nice shine on it. Once you pat it dry, it shouldn't be tacky. And also, if you push your finger on it like this, the fish should bounce, the flesh should bounce back at you. Okay? Now I'm going to show you how to fillet the fish. There's two fillets on each side. And the way I found to teach people to make it easiest is we're going to remove some of the fins. Uh, especially on a snapper, if you can see these dorsal fins when I pull them up, they're pointed with little quills that really hurt. Uh, so if you haven't filleted fish before, I highly recommend you take a pair of scissors and just follow the backbone and let's clip those quills off. And then at least we know when we're filleting the fish, we're not going to get poked. All the scraps that I'm not going to use in the soup later on, going in my compost bin for my garden. So that's the dorsal fin and the spine, so now it's a little safer. Then we have the two pectoral fins. I clip these off as well. And the two bottom fins. There's a name for these. I forgot it. Those are coming off. Okay. Now these make excellent addition to a fish soup because we're going to get a lot of gelatin out of them. It's going to give the fish soup some real nice body. And this is the back fin right here. We'll take that one off. Okay, don't post those. Now also if you want you can even trim the tail fin. I usually don't but I'll do it just to show you. All right. Now in terms of culinary this fish is now considered dressed. It's had its fins removed, it's been gutted, and it's ready to cook whole. We can put cuts in here, stuff it with some herbs, and roast it or steam it whole. Uh, that's done in quite a few cultures around the world. But what we want to do today is fillet it. So scissors aside, and I'm going to show you guys how to make really nice quick fillets. Sharp knife, most important. Fish is on an angle, okay? The fillet goes up to the head. One of the mistakes people make is they cut straight across like this, and they don't realize they're losing all that meat. So the first thing I do is draw a line from the head right down to the belly. See how that goes on an angle, okay? The second thing I do is with the tip of my knife, I draw a line right along the backbone. You can feel the backbone with your finger and the tip of your knife. And just by putting the knife in about half an inch like this and following the spine right down, right to the tail, we've drawn a line, we've separated the fillet from the spine. Now again, holding this piece up with this hand and the tip of the knife, you see how I'm pushing down so hard on the spine that the knife actually bends? This is how you know you're getting close and you're not wasting any meat, all right? We took the fish out of the water. We shouldn't waste any of it, all right? So now we come up here. Now here we have a couple of bones, and there's two things we can do. We can cut through the bones or go around them. I think it's just as easy just to go right around these bones and leave them attached to the belly. So here we have a really nice fillet of snapper. We get some little scraps of fish like this. You can actually kind of paste them in where the pin bones were. But if you see here, we didn't leave any meat left behind. This is the belly where the bones are, and this actually can be taken out and simply put into my soup. Would make a really nice addition to make a fish stock, okay? Let's go to my compost bin. So this is filet number one. From this, I'm gonna get two portions. I'm gonna cut it on an angle. I'm gonna make sure there's no pin bones in here. And there aren't, because I left them there. We're gonna cut two nice little pieces of portion on here. And then we're going to saute and we're going to actually start getting my precision induction top hot. Now this way, 
since I'm not left-handed, I'm right-handed, I can't cut the fish backwards. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna come to draw my line, basically from the tail in reverse. So again, just drawing a nice line along the spine, and then I'm going back again with the tip of my knife, letting the knife flex. That's why fillet knives are always flexible, okay? And you're gonna see what a beautiful fish fillet I'm gonna get off of this. Again, I'm gonna cut right over those belly bones so I don't have to go through them. And again, look, I wasted none of the fish. It's not stuck on there. And I've got this beautiful carcass that later on I'm gonna make a wonderful fish soup from, okay? We'll do that in another video, promise. So here's my second fillet. And again, there's no bones in here because I left them on the carcass. All right, if you find a scale or two, get rid of those. They're not really pleasant to get in your mouth when you're eating. And then again, cut this on an angle. So now out of that one fish, I've got four beautiful fillets and bones to make a nice soup. Very simple what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get my pan hot. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Okay, I'm gonna season my fish with just a little bit of salt on the skin and a little bit on the flesh side. And I always season fish right before I cook it because if you don't, the salt's gonna start drawing moisture out as it sits. So if I salt this and let it sit on the side for 10 minutes, it's gonna draw moisture out, make the fish dry, okay? Now, one of the things we can do if we wanna keep the skin crispy in our pan, and I do, is we can either weigh it down with a spatula so the skin crisps so it doesn't curl up, or you can actually cut little holes in it by holding the fish, squeezing it like this, and just cutting a little line, and that'll actually give us a weight so the fish doesn't curl up, okay? So again, a little olive oil in my pan, medium high heat. I'm gonna let these beauties cook for a minute. So I'm gonna do the snapper fillets first in the olive oil, take them out, let them rest, and I'm gonna make a quick saute of asparagus, fresh leeks, white wine, and butter as soon as we come back. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, so 375 degrees on the induction cooktop, I've been cooking the snapper. Skin side first the way I showed you, now I've turned them over, letting them cook through. So I would say right now they're about 90% done. What I'm gonna do is take them out of the pan, because I don't want to overcook fish, right? And I'm gonna to start to make the sauce and the vegetable together, and then I'm gonna return the fish to the pan, skin side up, so we can finish the dish. I'm gonna leave this getting hot for a minute, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some beautiful leeks. I've washed them and cleaned them already. All right, we take the little stems off, Make sure you compost them, put them in your garden. Thinly sliced leeks. Nice sharp knife, take your time. Practice your cutting techniques. One of these days we'll do a nice video on nice cutting techniques for you guys. So right in the pan. Now the fish was cooked in this pan, I didn't clean it out. So it still has some of the olive oil, has some of the fish flavor. We don't wanna waste that, huh? If we want to toss it, I don't scrape it back and forth on the PIC because that doesn't do you any good. It could scratch, scratch the surface. Asparagus. We talked about the wooden ends on some other uh, videos that we've done. You know that this is not edible. So what we do is we just basically you can hold it and see where it snaps. And that's the part you eat and this is the part you compost. Or you can do it with your knife. We do one, two, three, and cut right here. Wrong side of the knife and you come up with the same thing, all right? So basically what I do is I can pretty much see them from experience, but you guys should do the snap test, I like to call it, and again, doesn't break, doesn't break, doesn't break, there it breaks, okay? Snap test. Now I'm gonna just cut this on a nice angle because I wanna see the tips, okay? And this is gonna expose more of the asparagus by cutting on an angle like that, and what that does is let it cook a little quicker. Right on top of the leeks, a little bit of butter. Now, I know we have fish and vegetables and olive oil, so we're on a healthy track here, but a tablespoon and a half of butter, not gonna hurt us. A little more butcher cracked pepper, you know what, guys, I love that, and a touch of salt. You can just see how green and fragrant this is from the asparagus, from the leeks, okay? I'm gonna add another one of my favorite things, Fresh bay leaves, we've talked about this before. So I, think I wanted to show you guys, this is how they come. Basically they grow off the laurel tree. Uh, I know people actually have these in their yards, um, but to buy the dried ones in the little jars at the supermarket, it wastes the time. Find the fresh ones if you can. If you want to, dry them yourself. We actually have a dehydrator that you can get from us. 
So I take two or three of these leaves, because when they heat up in the fat, they're gonna start releasing their own oil and really give this an herbal fragrant uh, touch to the dish that I really like, okay? Now two more components that the butter is melted, the vegetables are getting soft, the leeks are softened, and the asparagus is getting cooked, but I still want it to be bright green and crispy, okay? I don't wanna overcook the asparagus. So two quick components of this dish. One are some capers, little flower buds, uh, usually come packed in a brine or sometimes packed in dried salt. It's about a tablespoon. They come packed in dried salt, give them a rinse. All right, and a little white wine. Save a little bit, you guys can have a glass with your snapper. That's about a half a cup of white wine. Now what I do here is very simple. I'm gonna let this cook down, it takes about a minute and a half, okay? I'm gonna test the seasoning. Blow on it. Just a pinch more salt. And I was careful because remember the capers were salted, right? Makes sense. So now I have my snapper fillets. And they're gonna go right back on top and simmer with the sauce for about a minute. And then I'm gonna turn around. While that's finishing up, I'll clean here for a second. And then what I'm gonna do is very simple. Save the asparagus for later for lunch. That can compost. Very simple, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna plate them up, let them finish right there in that sauce. So to plate up, you can see how the sauce reduced, okay? Take one of our fillets, put it on the side for now. Let's get some of our beautiful veg. And I'll even leave the bay leaf in there for garnish, but make sure your, your family, or your friends, your guests know not to eat the bay leaf. But I like to leave it there for a little natural style garnish. Another beautiful filet. Look at this one. This will easily serve three to four people off that one fish and will make soup. So keep an eye out for that fish soup video. All right, now look at this beautiful. Now, even though I added butter, look how light this broth is. This is not a heavy dish. If you guys try this at home, please send me an email and let me know what you think of it. Very simple, simple, simple dish. Matter of fact, first time I had this dish, something similar to it, before I kind of added my own little twist, probably about 15 years ago down in Florida. Snapper with some leeks and some butter, it was wonderful. All right, we turn that off. And now, very simple, we're gonna put one filet and two filets. Little pinch of my famous butcher crack pepper that you guys know I love. And of course you know I love extra virgin olive oil as a garnish, very floral and herbal. And I put about less than an eighth of a teaspoon of extra virgin on there for garnish. Crispy red snapper, sauteed leeks, and asparagus. Enjoy.